Hi, Joe Alden, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook and designer of quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. One thing the group medic will very quickly find in times of trouble is that their job doesn't have regular business hours. As someone who practiced obstetrics as a young man, I knew that delivering babies at 4 a.m. wouldn't be conducive to a good sleep pattern. Given the uncertainties in the aftermath of a disaster, you've got to be as ready to act at midnight as you would be at noon. Lack of sleep is known as sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation can have a very negative effect on the health of group members and the medic himself or herself. Some researchers believe that prolonged lack of sleep carries health risks that approach that of cigarettes or heart disease. The mental and physical deterioration that sleep deprivation causes can break you. Indeed, it can be used and has been used as a method of torture. The CDC estimates that up to 50 to 70 million Americans, 50 to 70 million, suffer from some kind of sleep disorder in normal times. In survival scenarios, imagine, it's going to be a major issue. Sleep deprivation is not exactly the same thing as insomnia. Insomnia refers to the inability to sleep adequately despite being given the opportunity. Sleep deprivation refers to lack of sleep due to some factor preventing the attempt, like the end of the world as we know it. The health risks, however, are similar. There are many reasons why you might be sleep deprived in survival settings. Unfamiliar surroundings, increased responsibilities, Fatigue from strenuous activities and hostile neighbors, they're just some. How would sleep deprivation worsen your chances of succeeding in an emergency? The parts of the brain that are involved in alertness and attention, the thalamus, and the area that controls many higher level thought processes, the prefrontal cortex, are especially vulnerable to lack of sleep. If the brain doesn't get enough rest, judgment may be impaired and you might become incapable of putting events into the proper perspective and as such, fail to take appropriate action. This causes mistakes that can be very costly. In a 2004 study that evaluated the performance of medical residents, those getting less than four hours of sleep made twice the medical errors than residents who slept seven to eight hours a night. It disturbed me to read that because four hours was considered a pretty good night's sleep during my residency at a pretty big city hospital. Maybe worse, a person with sleep deprivation lacks the realization that they're impaired. The failure to get seven to eight hours of sleep every night causes a lot of effects. It causes you to be irritable, it may cause tremors, bloodshot puffy eyes, headaches, confusion, memory loss, depression, muscle aches, hallucinations, and other psychotic symptoms can also occur. And also, medical issues like diabetes and high blood pressure, they may go out of control, and some people even get blackouts. Microsleeps is what they're called, and they can definitely affect your ability to function. Some people lose weight, some people gain weight, and as I said before, people may even have hallucinations or other psychotic symptoms. Deep sleep is very important to repair damage due to molecules responsible for aging and tissue damage called free radicals. When you don't get enough deep sleep, healing is delayed, and the increased amount of muscle activity from lack of rest ends up to being the equivalent of physical overexertion. Now what about the elderly? Don't older folks naturally sleep less hours and less deeply? Studies show that the elderly do get less sleep, but not necessarily because they need less. Sleep could be affected by all sorts of things. Sleep apnea, arthritis pain, heart issues, all sorts of stuff. Those in their later years might also develop something called advanced sleep phase syndrome. In this instance, there's an inability to stay awake during the day. You'll find them nodding off a lot while having an inability to stay asleep at night. Interestingly, there are a number of people who seem to function just fine with less than the average number of sleep hours. No one's quite sure why this is so, but it appears to involve about 5% of the population, including people like Bill Clinton and even Donald Trump. The best treatment for sleep deprivation involves a concept we're going to call sleep hygiene. Good sleep hygiene adjusts your behavior to maximize the amount of restful sleep that you get. Consider adhering to a standard bedtime and also wake up time. Making your environment as comfortable as possible. Avoiding nicotine, caffeine, and alcohol before going to bed. Exercising regularly, but not just before going to bed. Eliminating as much light as possible in the room at bedtime. Staying away from heavy foods for at least two hours before going to sleep and keeping your mind clear of stressful issues at bedtime or hopefully anytime. Many of the above strategies, by the way, work well for those struggling with working night shifts. Some, however, may be difficult to implement after a major disaster. 
Of course, there are many prescriptions and over-the-counter sleep aids that might help, uh, such as Ambien, Halcyon, Restoril, things like that. These drugs should be used, however, with the utmost caution due to the potential for addiction and abuse. Sleeping pills should never, by the way, be used by those with things like airway obstruction issues, sleep apnea, things like that. It may prevent them from waking up to breathe. Over-the-counter sleep aids include diphenhydramine. This is available as the brand name Benadryl, but can also be found in combination medications like Tylenol PM and Somonex. Usually diphenhydramine is used for allergic reactions, but the 50 milligram dosage is effective in inducing sleep. Be aware that some may experience drowsiness the next day. Another antihistamine with sedative effects is doxylamine, also known as Unisom. A better alternative to start with would be some form of natural sleep aid. Some of the common alternative remedies for sleeplessness include the following, usually taken as supplements or sometimes made into teas. Melatonin, chamomile, lavender, valerian, kava, glycine, tryptophan, passionflower, magnesium, and even CBD oil. I'll be putting up an article, by the way, at doomandbloom.net describing everything on the list in a lot more detail with doses used in the near future. Certain foods are thought to be helpful in promoting a good night's sleep. They contain sleep inducing or muscle relaxing substances like melatonin, magnesium, or tryptophan. Oatmeal has melatonin, milk has tryptophan, almonds have tryptophan and magnesium. Bananas, believe it or not, have melatonin and magnesium. And whole wheat bread actually also helps release tryptophan. Alternatives known to improve sleep patterns include yoga, massage therapy, meditation, sound machines, and even acupuncture. Encourage group members to make some lifestyle changes before a disaster occurs so they'll be rested and prepared to deal with the challenges of the uncertain future. This is Joel MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, learn more about natural disasters and 200 other off-grid medical topics in the award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook. Get your family medically prepared with quality kits and individual supplies from our entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.